Well, good morning, everybody. Mark Finan here in the Home Weather Office on this Saturday morning. It's the 19th day of August 2023, a special edition of the morning briefing because of Hurricane Hillary. I'll also be providing an update later on this afternoon after the 5 p.m. update from the National Hurricane Center. So this is the update about Hillary uh, getting closer to the coast, getting closer to California, and we're getting a better impact of the impacts we'll see and where we will see those impacts as we head into Sunday and very early on Monday morning. So let's get right to it. Let's get right to the um, the latest from the National Hurricane Center. So this is the 8 a.m. update for uh, California. A couple of changes from the overnight hours. The wind speed has decreased slightly down to 125 miles an hour. But the biggest is the movement from the to the northwest at 16 miles an hour. So it's moving this way and then it will move off to that way. So this is the current path. And I'll tell you what, what's going to happen here in the next 24 hours is the maximum sustained winds, that's the wind right around the eye wall, will be decreasing. And the forward speed right now is 16 miles an hour. Yesterday it was 10, uh, 16 miles an hour. That will be increasing. So it's forward speed increasing. It really is a good thing because that means the storm doesn't linger over one area all that long. It helps to decrease the, the rain because while you may be getting rain at, I don't know, half an inch, inch an hour, whatever it might be, it, it decreases the number of hours that it rains at that rate. Um, you know, when we see big problems in areas like Texas and Florida, when some of these storms, they come inland and then they just kind of stall and you see huge amounts of flooding. A storm like this, it gets into the higher latitudes and it just accelerates. So that's, I mean, look at the difference between 6 p.m. on Sunday and 6 a.m. on Monday. I mean, it goes from, uh, in 12 hours, it goes from being near San Diego to being near Elko, Nevada. So yeah, it's uh, it's 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 moving. It's going to move very quickly. So again, that will help to decrease the um, the flood threat. But there will still be flooding. So here's the morning satellite. Uh, just a few clouds over the Sierra. Otherwise, mainly clear. But this is what's interesting right here. Look at all the cloud cover streaming off, and this is coming off the hurricane. If I keep scrolling down here, here's Baja, and we're not very we're not even close to the eye just yet. But the moisture is already streaming well across Nevada. All the way down here is where you get to the you get to the eye. The eye is filled in. Last night it was very well defined. But what's happening here is we're starting to entrain some uh, some drier air. So the eye is right here, and if you look right here, there are breaks in the clouds in here, and drier air will get entrained into this as well as its interaction with colder water. And we'll also start to see a bit more um, uh, wind shear. And that will, that's all helping to tear this thing apart and, and bring about its weakening, which is by, why by the time it gets to California, um, it will be a, a tropical storm, a rapidly decreasing, a rapidly weakening tropical storm. So while we've uh, been talking a lot about the fact that it's a Category 4 storm, now a Category 3 storm, um, we won't be seeing anything like that once it gets to California. It'll still get windy and gusty in parts of Southern California as this thing makes landfall, but the biggest threat is going to be from flooding. So let's take a look at some of the morning models and we'll go through a few of them because there is a bit of um, uh, discrepancy in terms of where we're going to see the rain, but I'm going, to, I'm going to show you the NAM. The NAM's been pretty consistent here. We'll start off with this one. Now this is uh, this afternoon around five o'clock. We've already been seeing some rain uh, during last night, and we'll see again today, some rain in the deserts. And I've seen some pictures online. There's been some uh, some road flooding already around uh, the Joshua Tree National Park area. Um, and and that's just from, you know, monsoon thunderstorms that are being fueled by the moisture coming off the hurricane. And that's what we see here. Um, these will be monsoon thunderstorms. This, this isn't really the storm itself. All right. Now look at all of this. Look at all this rain streaming into the Sierra. So as we head into tonight, this is a two o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning. We've got rain around Yosemite. We've got rain up toward um, up toward South Lake Tahoe. We've got rain in Bakersfield, and we have rain certainly all the, all across I-15 and I-10. But the eye wall hasn't even gotten close yet. This is five o'clock Sunday morning. This is eight o'clock Sunday morning. All right. Now we have that solid rain in the Sierra. The valley is dry. A very well-defined line on this model of the, the rain, no rain line. 
Now let's get into when the, the actual storm comes in. This is two o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. You can finally start to see the isobars with the tropical storm. And then uh, this is uh, five o'clock on Sunday. So here it is. There's, uh, there's a tropical storm sitting over San Diego. Heavy rain, certainly orographically enhanced with the easterly flow around that tropical storm. So that will be interacting with the mountains. We'll see huge amounts of rain come down in some of the mountainous areas. For Northern California, well, there may be some rain around Tahoe, but certainly Mono County. Uh, for those of you that may be uh, driving 395 between Walker and Bishop and down toward, uh, well, shoot, all the way down toward, uh, well, Lone Pine and areas farther south, Death Valley certainly, um, gonna be seeing rain. Yeah, Death Valley's gonna see a good amount of rain this weekend. <sighs> Yeah, Sunday might not be a good time to be in Death Valley, but um, and, and they've had they've had issues before, and I'm sure it's too late to tell people not to go to Death Valley this weekend. Here is uh, Sunday. This is uh, around 10 o'clock at night. This is this is where the the circulation is. It won't be a tropical storm at this point, but here's where the circulation is, kind of right over Death Valley. So the rain is already beginning to taper in Southern California. And then this is Monday morning at five o'clock. Now the circulation is up here in Nevada. We are getting good rain in Nevada. They're also on secondary roads. I wouldn't be worried about Interstate 80 or Highway 50, but on secondary roads here, there may be some uh, flooding that would be of a concern. And while there may be some lingering showers in Southern California, uh, the potential for additional flooding rains will have ended. And when the sun comes up on Monday morning, um, this is eight o'clock, uh, we'll be just assessing what happened in, in Southern California, basically. And then as we get into Monday, the remnants of the circulation are now up here over, over Idaho, uh, where they are seeing some rain. So that's what, the, that's what the NAM is suggesting. Let's take a look at the GFS because it's a little bit different. Let's back up in time. All right, so this has the same sort of pattern of all this moisture streaming to the north. This is... On, I'll go to five o'clock on Sunday. So five o'clock on Sunday, very similar to what I showed you on the NAM. There's the circulation over San Diego. Here's all the moisture streaming to the north, a very well-defined back edge. No rain up and down the valley, but rain from Tahoe to the south, very similar to the NAM. It's after this that there are some, some model differences. This is Monday, I should say Sunday night. This is Monday morning at five o'clock. This, mo this uh, model has a little bit more on the west slope and certainly during the day on Monday, this is Monday at eight o'clock, it tries to slough a, uh, an area of light rain, that would be very light rain, off into the valley while the main circulation is in the same location and bringing a chance of rain throughout the area on Monday. Not quite sure about that. Uh, usually in the wake of a hurricane or tropical storm, you see some rapid uh, clearing. Some of you in the comments section have been asking for the Euro, so let's take a look at the Euro. And uh, somebody in, uh, said, uh, you know, let's take a look at the euro because it's always right. Well, there's no model that's always right. Uh, so I'll go to Sunday morning. This is Sunday morning. This model has the, um, uh, has the circulation a little bit farther south. So this one is slower, maybe not picking up on the accelerating forward speed, but the other models have the circulation here and the Euro has it down here, but same sort of pattern with the um, uh, with all the moisture streaming off to the north. So this one, this the uh, Euro doesn't bring the circulation up until much much later. This is uh, this is uh, five o'clock in the afternoon. This this the Euro has the circulation down here in L.A. County, whereas the uh, the other models have the circulation up here in Nevada. So I'm not sure. And, and then this one has the everything a little bit farther to the west. I know this, this, this one has a sector a little bit differently. So Lake Tahoe would be here. This would be rain throughout El Dorado County and then all the way down the west slope. Yeah, I just, I just don't think the Euro is picking up on the faster speed. Um, and the other thing that's going on here, if I go back to the, uh, the NAM, Let's go back to the NAM, and I'm going to show you the five. Uh, let's go to 700 millibar. 
pattern. Um, there is this other low that's been s sitting around California uh, just off the coast. And there's the interaction between that low and the low that's going to be the tropical storm. Let me switch sectors here. There we go. And um, and there's it's not showing up very well here, but there is a weak low in here. And the circulation from that is probably what's going to be helping to kick this a little bit farther to the east. So in other words, the tropical storm's coming up this way. There's been a low spinning around here and the circulation around that low is going to continue to try to kick this thing a little bit farther to the east. This is the wind field, by the way, uh, at, um, at around 10,000 feet. So yeah, 10,000 foot winds around uh, you know, 90 knots. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. I don't think I'd wanna be on Mount Whitney this weekend. So there's, there's the wind field um, by 8 o'clock on Monday morning, well, well off to the east with drying air coming in behind it. Um, oh, I do want to show one, one other thing here. Let's go to the... Yeah, okay, I'm going to switch sectors because I, I, I do want to highlight um, Southern California and the and, and the, the hazards that we are looking at. So we'll go to total precip accumulation off of this model. So once again, let's see, around San Diego, inch and a half. Man, this really haves and have nots. LA, not nearly as much. But I'll tell you, the interaction with the mountains is going to be significant here. And as I talked about yesterday, the mountains will see significant amounts of rain, maybe six to eight inches of rain. And it's going to be the, the flow coming down um, the mountains into those alluvial plains uh, that could impact areas like Palm Springs. Certainly a lot of areas around Joshua Tree, um, as well as um, there'll be low areas along Interstate 8, Interstate 10, and I-15 that may be impacted. And you'll also notice some areas up here toward Death Valley that we'll see some. Um, I expect we'll see once again some flash flooding in Death Valley. And, and Death Valley has had um, flash flooding from um, a number of storms over the last year. Uh, we saw it last winter. Uh, actually, I think we even saw some last summer. I think we had a big monsoon storm go through there last summer, caused a lot of washouts. Of course, we had the big winter, and, uh, and some of those roads just have not been repaired. Um, so if you're gonna be in Death Valley, uh, I would suggest staying on the main highway. Maybe not a good time to be um, heading down to the racetrack or places like that because of the uh, the dirt roads are probably going to be leading to washouts uh, once again. So there's a lot going on. I will have another update here this afternoon after the 5 p.m. update comes from the National Hurricane Center. And we'll also look at some of the, um, the late afternoon models as well. So there will be, uh, the bottom line is there'll be a significant impact here uh, for Southern California. Precautions should be taken already um, and travel in the Southern deserts, especially south of I-15, uh, should uh, be highly discouraged because, because of flooding on the roadways. And remember, if there's water on the roadway, just turn around, don't drive through it. Uh, there are gonna be problems. Um, don't be part of the problem. Don't get yourself hurt. We'll get through this. Uh, so I'll talk to you later with uh, the latest update. Have yourself a great Saturday.